So in this video, I will be showing how to do um, project one, parts A and B in CMG. The cool thing is that at the end, um, we can compare our answers in CMG to the answers that we get by hand in MATLAB, and they should be almost exact. So the first thing we need to do is, um, after opening CMG, we're going to open Builder. So I'm going to double click on my Builder icon. And then in the Builder window that comes up, I'm going to go to File, and then New. Under Simulator Type, I'm going to choose IMAX. Uh, because we have a single phase flow reservoir, so we can use IMAX. Um, under working needs, I'm going to choose field. Under porosity, I'm going to choose single porosity. And then I'm going to click on OK. And then OK again. So I'm going to start with part A, problem one. So that's the case where we have a 3x3 three three reservoir. So under reservoir, I'm going to um, click, and then I'm going to go to create grid, and then I'm going to I'm gonna choose Cartesian. So reservoir, create grid, and then Cartesian. And then in the I direction, we have three grids. In the J, we have three grids, and in the K, we just have, we have only one grid because we have a two-dimensional reservoir. Under I direction, I'm going to enter 3 by our dx, which is 20,000 divided by 3. Same for dy. 3 by 20,000. And then OK. So now we have the basic outline of our reservoir. Under reservoir, I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna select array properties. So this is where I'm gonna put in the values for porosity, thickness, perm, and water saturation. So we go to reservoir and we double click on array properties. First, we wanna put in grid top. Grid top is basically the depth to the top of our, of our reservoir. In our case, I'm going to say it's 5,000 feet deep. For grid thickness, I'm going to put in um, our H, which is 10 feet. For porosity, I'm going to put in the value that we're given, which is 0 0.2. For perm, I'm going to put in the value we're given, which is 25. Under from J, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to right click and say equals I. And then OK. The same for from K. I'm going to right click and say equals I. And then OK. Then I'm going to go down the menu and go to water saturation. So on the top, I'm going to scroll down this menu and select water saturation. And then our water saturation is going to be 1 since we have only water in our reservoir. And then I'm going to choose OK. And then OK again. Next, I'm going to put in the values for our fluid properties. The way we do this is um, I'm going to click on components. I'm going to double click on model. I'm going to choose the first option. And I'm going to say OK. For my reservoir temperature, I'm going to say that is 200 um, degrees Fahrenheit. Temperature, temperature doesn't matter because we have an isothermal simulation. So we would get the same answers regardless of what temperature we put in. I'm going to say generate data up to maximum pressure of 2,000 PSI. So let's just assume that our pressure is never going to go above 2,000 PSI. And that's a reasonable assumption because that's a reasonable assumption because 
our initial pressure is a thousand psi and we have a producer in the middle of our reservoir so obviously pressures are going to be going down from a thousand psi and then under bubble point pressure calculation i'm going to enter i'm going to enter a value of 100 psi so basically the bubble point option doesn't matter because we have water we don't have oil so so again whatever value i put in would not affect our results under oil density i'm going to put in 62.4 again we don't have oil so that doesn't matter under gas density i'm going to um, put in a gas gravity of 0 0.3 again we don't have gas so that doesn't matter pressure dependence of water viscosity i'm going to say that is zero and then we're going to choose okay and that's our component section done Next, I'm going to um, double click on PVT region one. So I'm going to double click on PVT region one. And then I'm going to go under general and make sure that the values for our water properties match what we were given. So for example, um, formation volume factor for water should be one. So I'm going to change that to one. On the next line, we have water compressibility. Again, that should be one to negative six. So I'm gonna change that. On the next line, we have reference pressure. That's fine. And then viscosity of water should be one centipoise. So I'm gonna change that to one centipoise. And then apply and okay. So that's our fluid properties done. Next, I'm going to go to rock fluid. This is basically where we will put in raw perm information. But since we have a single, since we have only water in our reservoir, um, raw perms are not necessary. But obviously, we have to put in values for for CMG to run. So under rock fluid, I'm going to double click on rock fluid types. And then I'm going to go to the top and by the arrow, I'm going to select and then I'm going to say new rock type. So click on the arrow and choose new rock type. Next, I'm going to, I'm going to uncheck all boxes. So basically uncheck the box that says include capillary pressure. And I'm going to go to tools and then generate tables using correlations. This is basically where we're going to enter the endpoints for our raw perm curves. Again, we don't have all, we only have water. So these values mean nothing. So in the first, for the first eight, for the first eight rows, I'm going to enter zero. And then for the last eight rows, I'm going to enter one. And this is just a CMG can run. These values will not affect our results. And then apply and OK. Apply again and OK. So now our rock fluid section is done. Next, we're going to go to initial conditions. So I'm going to double click. Then I'm going to double click on initial conditions. So double click. And then I'm going to select advanced. So I'm going to click on advanced. And then I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and I'm going to select user specified pressure and saturations for each grid block. So that's the third option. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to apply and then OK. Now I'm going to go back to reservoir. I'm going to click on reservoir. 
I'm going to go to array properties and I'm going to define my initial pressure and oil saturation now. So I'm going to scroll down till I find pressure and I'm going to set that to a thousand PSI. I'm going to do the same for oil saturation. I'm going to set that to zero. So oil saturation, I'm going to set that to zero and then OK and OK. The next thing we want to do is we want to go under wells. So under wells, I'm going to right click on wells and I'm going to add a new well. So our well is a producer is a producer. I'm going to call it producer one. The well type is producer. Then I'm going to go under constraints. I'm going to check the box that says constraint definition. And then I'm going to choose to operate the well at a constant rate. So um, it's going to be at a surface water rate of a thousand cubic feet per day, which I believe is 178 barrels per day. Uh, I, might, I might need to check that. So, a thousand cubic feet to reservoir barrels. So yeah, that's 178.1. So 178.1 barrels per day. And I'm going to say OK. And then next, we need to put in a location for our well. I'm going to expand wells. So basically, click on the arrow beside wells. And then I'm going to expand producer one. So click on the plus beside producer one. Then I'm going to double click on perf. And then under, I'm, I'm going to go to the perforations tab. And then our um, well address is going to be, is going to be 221. So basically our well is at the center of our reservoir. So that's going to be I is equals to 2, J equals 2, and K equals 1. And I'm going to apply, and then OK. Next, I'm going to add dates. So under dates, I'm going to double-click dates. I'm going to say add a range of dates. And then our step is going to be in days. And then I'm going to go from day 0 to day two. So I'm going to change days since simulation starts. I'm going to change that to two. And then I'm going to say OK. OK again. OK. And then I'm going to close this. So now we have all green check marks. The last thing I want to do is want to go under numerical and basically set our DT to one day. So under, I'm going to click on numerical. I'm going to double click on numerical controls. And then I'm going to change the minimum time step size to 0 0.99999. So basically, I'm going to make it as close to one day as I possibly can for the minimum time step size. And for the max time step size, I'm going to say that is Oh, so we need to we need to set DT wall first. I'm gonna say that's one day, and then now I can say uh, DT mean is 0 0.9999, and then DT max I'm gonna say that's just one day. And I'm gonna apply and then OK. So now we can save. 
you should actually have saved bef way before this, but now we can save and then so I'm gonna call this problem one and then save. Okay. And then now I can validate with IMAX. Yes. Run um, normal immediately and then I click on run. So now I can close this and I can view my results. So back in CMG. So now I can drag the um, IRF file into results 3D. Then I'm going to change the display to show me pressure. So pressure. And I'm going to go to the second day, day two. And then we can move around to see the pressure in each block. The block where we have the producer, the pressure is 989.5 PSI, which is what I had by hand after one day. And after two days, the pressure at the producer is 979.7 PSI. And you might notice that some blocks are showing 1000 PSI. Um, this is because we only have one decimal place. So if we had more, it'd probably be 999.99 something. Same as what we had by hand. So for part A, problem two of the project, all we have to do is change from a three by three grid block system to a hundred by hundred and then move our well location. So in the CM, G display screen, I'm going to double click on my .dat file from the previous section. So that's basically problem one, .dat. And then I am going to um, look for grid VARI. So grid VARI is basically, um, right now it's three by three by one. Well, we want to have a hundred by a hundred by one. For our DI variation, we want to change that from three by the old three by the old DX to a hundred by our new DX is going to be twenty thousand divided by a hundred, which is two hundred. The same for DY. That's 100 by 200. And then for DK, um, I'm going to change that from 9 to 10,000. 10, so that's basically saying that since we have, since all together we have 100 by 100, which is 10,000 grid blocks, the thickness of all of them is going to be 10. And then for D top, I'm going to change that from nine by five thousand to ten thousand by five thousand because once again we have ten thousand grid blocks in all together so that's ten thousand and then I'm gonna save as I'm gonna call this problem two I'm going to change the file type to all files. I'm going to add dot that dot dat to the end of that, and then save. So now we can close this, and then I'm going to drag my problem to the dat file to builder. I'm going to say okay, and then I'm going to move the well location. So I'm going to go to wells, I'm going to expand wells, I'm going to expand producer, and then I'm going to click on perf. Our new well location under perforation is going to be 50, 
51. So that's basically the center of our reservoir. Then I'm going to validate with IMAX to yes and then run. Now I can close this. I can go to CMG. I can drag my IRF file to results 3D. And then we can look at pressure. After one day and after two days, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add more more days so we can see how um, the pressure field grows. So I'm gonna go under wells. I'm gonna go to dates. I'm gonna add a range of dates. And I'm gonna go to a hundred days. Then yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, and then close. I'm gonna validate with IMAX again. I'm gonna run. And I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna go back to. Or actually, I'm gonna go to launcher. I'm gonna drag my IRF file to results 3D. I'm gonna go to pressure. Then I'm gonna press play. So this is how it looks like after after about 90 days. After 30 days, it looks like this. After 50 days, it looks like after 60 days, it looks like this. And obviously we have this um, this kind of cut off at these points because our well isn't exactly at the center of our reservoir. Because obviously if we have 100 grid blocks, um, block 50 isn't actually exactly the center. So that's why we have this drag at these edges. Okay, so now moving on, moving on to part part B of the project, problem four. Um, we're gonna have to change our NX from 100 to 80, our NY from 100 to 60. Obviously, our DX and DY are gonna change as well. Um, reservoir thickness has changed from 10 to 100 feet. And initial pressure has changed from 1,000 PSI to 3,700 PSI. Also, we have some new wells as well. So the first step is going to be to the first step is going to be to open a problem to the dat file. So I'm going to double click on problem to the dat. And then now I'm going to change where we have grid VARI, 100 by 100 by 1. I'm going to change that to 80 by 60 by 1. So that's 80, 60, 1. For DI, IVAR, I'm going to change that to nx which is 80 by dx dx is going to be our length divided by nx so that's 8000 divided by 80 which gives us 100 for dy we're going to have 60 grid blocks times dy is width over ny so that's 6000 divided by 60 which is 100 as well then I'm going to change DK. I'm going to make that um, 60 by 80, which is 4,800 times. Our new thickness is 100, so I'm going to make that 4,800 by 100. 
and then for D top, I'm going to change that from 10,000 to 48 for, for the 800. Basically, that's the number of grid blocks we have all together. So that's NX times NY, which gives us 4,800. So now we can save this to file and then um, save as. I'm going to change that to problem 3.dat and we're going to change the file type to all files. I'm going to save. Now I can close this and I can drag problem 3 to builder. And then I'm going to choose OK. So now we have a 80 by 60 reservoir. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add our wells. The first well is, or actually I'm going to change our initial pressure first. So to change that, I'm going to go to reservoir. I'm going to go to array properties. And I'm going to scroll down to pressure. To pressure. And I'm going to change the initial pressure from 1000 PSI to 3700 PSI. And then I'm going to click on, I'm going to click on OK. And then OK again. Now to add our wells, I'm going to go to wells and recurrent. So that's this option. And I'm going to go under wells. I'm going to change the well we already have. I'm going to change that to. So our first well is a constant bottom hole pressure well of 2000 PSI. So I'm going to go under constraints. I'm going to change that to a constant bottom hole pressure. And our pressure is 2000 PSI. And then apply and OK. Um, I'm going to change the wall location as well. So I'm going to click on PERF. I'm going to go to perforations. And then to get the wall location, I'm, I'm basically going to divide the X location by DX. So that's basically 2484 divided by DX, which is 1,000. That gives me 24.8. And then I'm going to round up to 25. The same for dy. I'm going to divide the y location, which is 2353, by dy, which is 100. And that gives me 23.5. Again, I'm going to round up to get 24. And then apply and OK. Then I'm going to add well two so that's going to be producer or i'm just going to leave it as well two well two it's a producer so i'm going to say type producer and then under constraints i'm going to check the box that says constraint definition i'm going to operate as a bottom hole pressure well of 2000 psi And then, OK, then I'm going to set the wall location. The wall location for this wall is um, 34, 32, 1. And then apply. OK. I'm going to add a new well, well 3. Once again, it's a producer constraints, uh, bottom hole pressure of 2000 PSI and then I'm going to set the well location. The well location of this well is 47, 36, 1. Next well 4. It's a producer as well. Constant bottom hole pressure 
of 2000 PSI. Okay. And then the well location is going to be the well location is going to be 66 32 1 and then apply. And then the last well is going to be an injector. So that's well 5 type is injector MOB weight. And then under constraints I'm going to say um it's a constant rate injector, so our surface water rate is going to be a thousand cubic feet per day, which is the same as 178.1 barrels per day. And then, okay. And then our well location is going to be our well location is. 46, 13, 1, and then apply, and OK. So now we have our five wells. We've changed our width and length of reservoir. We've changed our NX and NY and DX and DY. We've changed our thickness and we've changed the initial pressure. So now we can run the simulation. So validate with IMAX once again. Run. And then you can close this and we can view our results. So drag problem 3, the IRF to results 3D. And then you can scroll down to pressure. And then if we play, you can see how the pressure varies with time. You can see how pressure varies with time. And that's all for problem four. So on problem five of part B of the project, we're going to um, put in heterogeneous perm and porosity. We're going to change NX to 54 and change NY to 22. And then we're also going to change the our well grid block locations and our DX and DY. So the first step is to open problem 3.dat. So I'm going to double click on problem 3 the debt and then I'm under grid VARI I'm going to change that to from 80 by 60 by 1 to 54 which is our NX by 22 which is our NY by 1 and then under DIIVAR I'm going to change that to from 80 by 100 to 54 by DX and our DX is 130.75. Under DJJVAR, I'm going to change that from 60 by 100 to 22 by our DY, which is 261.5. And then under DK all, we now have, so under DK all, we now have 54 by 22 grid blocks altogether, which is 1188. The same for D top. I'm going to change that from 4800 to 11, 1188. That's our D top. And then I'm going to save as. I'm going to name this problem 5.dat all files. And I'm going to save that. Next, under perm I C O N. Under perm I C O N, I'm gonna take away C O N 25. So basically, I'm changing our permeability from a constant value of 25, and I'm gonna call. Um, I'm gonna import um, perm from the file that we were given. 
So under naturelic underscore perm, I'm gonna just copy copy the entire file and paste it under perm i. I'm gonna do the same for porosity. Under where we have P O R C O N 0 0.2. I'm going to take away CON 0 0.2 and I'm going to copy our porosity values from the naturally underscore PORO file. Oops. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste under POR. So now I can save this. I can close this out. And then back in CMG, I'm going to copy, I'm, I'm going to drag problem 5 to builder and then OK and OK again. Next, I'm going to go to reservoir. I'm going to go to array properties. I'm going to search for null blocks. So reservoir, array properties, and then null blocks. I'm going to right click under null blocks. I'm going to edit specification. So that's null blocks, right click and then edit specification. And then I'm going to say set blocks to null where porosity is less than or equal to zero. Set blocks to null if porous is less than or equal to zero. So that's basically going to give us our reservoir shape, which is this. So this is our reservoir shape. Um, next up is I'm going to change our well locations to match our new gridding system. So under wells and recurrence. Um, our new well location for well one is going to be 1991. And, and to get the well locations, we basically just divide the um, well location distance by dx or dy, and then we round up. So that's for well, that's for producer one. For well two, we're going to have. 27, 12, 1, and then apply. And then I'm going to go to well 3, and that's going to be 36, 14, 1, and then apply. I'm going to go to well 4, that's going to be 50, 12, 1, and then apply. And then lastly, we have well 5. I'm going to change that to 35, 5, 1. And we are done. So you can say apply and then OK. And then now we can, um, we can validate with IMAX. Or actually, before that, I want to go to, I want to close this out. And I want to change, I want to add more dates. I'm going to say add, I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add 200 days. Or I'm going to go, I'm going to go to 200 days. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm going to close this out and then validate with IMAX. And then OK. OK. And then yes. And then run. So we can close this. We can go to um, CMG and drag our IRF file to result 3D. So first of all, I want to look at um, porosity, uh, porosity field. 
So that's what parsley looks like. Um, this is what perm looks like. And then our pressure, which is this. You can see how it changes with time. You can see that almost the entire reservoir is close to 2008 PSI because of our constant bottom hole pressure wells. 